Welcome to Know Your Insurance. I'm Janine Mazurkevich, and we're back with Gary McNeilis here to talk about ways of saving you money. Prevention is really the key, right? Absolutely. And uh, on a recent show here, we had the Lushko boys on talking about prevention and what they do as far as uh, fire prevention, keeping your home safe, keeping your family safe. And that can really help you with filing these claims because Absolutely. claims is something you see. Claims is what keeps your rates higher. For sure. Right? So if you want to save money, you can help by preventing listening and preventing those claims. Sure. So what are some of those claims that you see? Well, you know what, first let's touch on, on what you said up with the Let's Go Boys. I think one of the things we didn't emphasize hard enough was that everything we talked about, even though it was telling you, hey, make sure your, your detectors are up to date, make sure uh, you, know, you have fire extinguishers. It, it didn't seem like we were talking about insurance, but that's a direct relation to what you pay for your insurance. And I think that that's very, very, very important. One of the things that we, we want to talk about today is what, are, what kind of claims are we seeing? Mm -hmm. And that, Janine, there's been a major shift um, as to what we're seeing out there, especially locally. Um, we're seeing more theft claims being called in. Not necessarily that people are making the claims once they hear what, what happens, um, but we're getting a lot of claims on theft theft of jewelry, theft of copper, uh, theft of household items that might be worth something. Just theft, and, and there's, a, there's some underlying things that we're seeing mm -hmm. as they're calling in. Um, so let's just talk about that for a little bit. Um, the theft of jewelry. We're finding that people are getting, getting robbed of the, some of their biggest assets, um, and they're they're in places that that are evident, and part of that is because the people who are actually doing the stealing are family members, mm -hmm. people that they know. Um, they just maybe have a problem. It could be a drug problem. It just could be a problem with theft, but. We're finding that a lot of what, when people call us and say, hey, you know, I just, I just had my diamond ring stolen. I just had some nice gold jewelry stolen. We're finding that people that enter the home know where they're at. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a big, big, a big thing. And so um, I think we could talk about that as prevention. And then we could talk about the, just what happens when that claim is made. Um, every time somebody goes, comes into my house, uh, no matter what it is, no matter what they do, if it's, if it's a plumber, if it's uh, someone who has to go in the basement of my home, I constantly say to my wife, did you go downstairs and check? Huh, okay. Did you go downstairs and check? I have this thing, and, and this is what we see people are telling us. Someone went in did a check, left a window open, left a door open, and our people didn't know that. What an easy way in to steal. Okay, so if someone comes to your home and you're, these are people that you are allowing into your home, all right, we wanna make sure, now, like you said, if you're having someone come, come in now and check on, you know, you need to check your heat, right? You need to check. Maybe you're having work done on your windows. Yep. And you're having not saying that he, any he, kind of construction absolutely. done. Absolutely. Any for any reason, we want to make sure what when they're there that we're checking. Prevent it. That's all I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not accusing any any one professional. I'm like uh, accusing anyone, but anyone who comes to your house and spends time, go back there and just check. Make sure the windows are locked. Okay. Make sure the doors are locked because you take that for granted. They were locked before. Well, they're not necessary luck. Just make sure that you're preventing that. Do that every single day, and you, ha you, take, you have less of a chance. If you live in, here's a big one, if you live in a home, a multifamily home, okay. is there access through the basement mm -hmm. from another home? Uh, the one that, that hit us last week quickly was a vacant home. 
we've got a double home, half is vacant, half is not. Easy place for someone to break into in the vacant side and work their way through the basement. All right. Okay, you go away, you go to church, you go to, you go to the grocery store. All of a sudden, someone knows that. They know that, and they have their easy way. They have their way detected and where, how they're going. And where do they go? They go to the things that they could turn over mm -hmm. the quickest. Jewelry, big item, okay? It's gone. People come home. What, you know, what happened? Furs, um, copper pipe, things like that. You take it for granted, but that's what they go for. Um, and then we have to tell people, here's what happened. You know, th we have to tell them, hey, there's coverage, or here's what's going to happen if you make the claim. Now, what are you looking for? if you want that covered? Because again, okay. knowing your insurance, knowing your policies and what's covered and what is not covered and why that's, you pay what you pay. That's a great question. It's a great question. Most homeowner policies have a maximum on things like jewelry, mm -hmm. theft of jewelry, okay? Keep in mind, if the house catches fire and the jewelry and the jewelry's evident and it melts down. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about theft. Mm -hmm. Usually there's a, 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 you know, a, a segment in the policy that says theft of jewelry, theft of furs, maximum coverage is X amount. The, the typical coverage would be $1,000 unless you have the jewelry singled out mm -hmm. or at least increased value. So what happens? It, it, it's worth it for every single person watching today to look at their policy and say, okay, what happens if jewelry is stolen? And if it's around a birthday or a celebration or a holiday where you are getting a new piece of jewelry, you need to make sure that you add that to your policy and say, I need to add this and get Absolutely. it insured. Most, most people do not add it. Most people do not say, I want increased coverage. Most people don't. One of the questions that comes up when we're doing the application is, is there a need for SPP? SPP is that individual coverage where you take that diamond ring or whatever it is and say, okay, how much would it cost to replace it? Mm -hmm. $3,000? Okay. You single it out for $3,000. And it's very important that when you're indemnified for your loss, mm -hmm. that's what it is because otherwise it's $1,000 maximum. And guess what? You're going to pay the insurance company back over a small period of time. You're going to pay them back anyway because you're surcharged for making that theft claim. So we have to be the ones, we're, we're telling people, hey, we don't want that to happen. We want to make sure you have the right coverage. Okay. You're watching Know Your Insurance. We're looking over your policies, making sure that you are safe and covered fully. We're with Gary McNeilis, and we'll be right back. watching Know Your Insurance right here on SSP TV and today we're focusing on theft okay and what you can do to prevent some types of theft in your homes and uh, Gary has been talking specifically about your jewelry because normally that's what thieves will target are those possessions that they know they can get to and they could actually have a turnover and sell. Yeah, very, I'm glad you segmented the jewelry because I think we need to make sure everybody knows when we talk about jewelry, it, we're not, we really don't just mean jewelry. It is that. It's furs. Mm -hmm. It's fine arts. Uh, things you may hang on your wall that are worth a lot of money and people can, can distinguish that. That's a tough one, but it's there. Um, how about silverware? Um, things like that. Do you have, you know, what's in your, in your hutch? What's exposed people can see? Anything that, that has value, they're looking for it. Why? Because they probably go out and buy drugs with it or they have another need for it and that, that keeps them in their, in their habits. So I think what we, want to, what we want to talk about is how do we cover those things, okay? We said first that typical homeowner policy has about $1,000 of coverage for jewelry, of theft of jewelry, okay? Keep in mind what we're talking about doesn't usually have to do with a fire. It usually has to do with theft, 
Okay, so we got a thousand dollars of coverage, and I said it before. You you make a thousand dollar claim. You have you have three thousand dollars worth of jewelry stolen. You make a claim. You get a thousand dollars net after your deductible, the whole thing. And what does the insurance company do? They raise your premiums because you had a theft claim, which is the highest, one of the highest surchargeable claims there is, Janine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's not always beneficial to make that claim. You pay the insurance company right. back. Not saying we don't want to pay. We're saying, is it worth it for you to make that claim? So how do I cover it? Well, first there's a thing called J coverage which kind of like gives you a broad form of coverage for that jewelry, and we talked about that before. But you choose the amount. Okay, okay so you may say, you know what, I think I have about $15,000 worth of jewelry. You choose that $15,000 worth, worth of jewelry coverage, but it's broad form. It's kind of like all the same perils or the things that are covered under a regular homeowner policy. That's how that would be covered, subject to a deductible, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and it would be just like making that claim on a normal piece of jewelry, okay? Now, there's another form, and that's called SPP coverage, and you've heard me talk about it several times on Know Your Insurance, and that is where you single the item out. Okay. okay. So. What items would those be? The first thing that comes to mind is, is the diamond ring. You get engaged, uh, you know, your, um, your fiancé has spent a fortune. On, on the jewelry. Uh, now you got a $10,000 ring, what happens? First, let's go back for one second, talk about that 10,000 of jewelry. Actually, we, I think we used 15,000 for an example. Mm -hmm. If you have $15,000 worth of jewelry, typically uh, just jewelry coverage, Jay, that would be about 53 bucks a year, 50, in the 50s, okay? Now we go to that SPP coverage and you're singling it out. You got a $15,000 diamond ring. And not only is it covered for theft, or things like what a home regular homeowner policy would be covered for, it's covered for mysterious disappearance. Okay, so what does that include? Well, I th I've told this story a million times. Go to the shore. These this is when uh, my kids were very young. My wife is playing in the sand with the kids, and all of a sudden looks down at her hand. Her diamond is missing. Okay, keep in mind, wasn't in the business at the time, knew nothing about this, but her diamond's missing. Now what do we do? Start Under looking that, through the sand for the ring. Yep, <laughs> Under any <laughs> typical situation, keep in mind, mysterious disappearance is not covered under a typical homeowner oh policy. Not covered under coverage J that we talked about. Okay. Okay, so even if you have it on the policy, that's not covered. But the SPP coverage which singles the item out, okay, now covers it. So now you have a $15,000 piece of jewelry. And keep in mind, I got I to gotta give the waiver here, it's what it would cost to replace it, mm -hmm. not necessarily what you have it insured for. Right. So if the jeweler said to you, listen, you're paying $8,000, but, but it's worth fifteen. Right. typically the insurance company is going to cover it for what you can replace it with. Right. Okay. So that's you know what you want to make sure of. Uh, so the fifteen thousand dollar. Let's say it is worth fifteen thousand. The next thing you want to know that's going to cost you about three times the amount mm -hmm. that J coverage would. So that's about one hundred fifty dollars a year. A little bit more. You know, give or take a little bit, but three times that amount. But now you're singled out. So under that situation that I described, now we didn't have a fifteen thousand dollar. Did diamond. you find the ring? The ring, you know everyone at you know home wants to know if you found you know the, the ring. the crazy part about it? You know how the ring was found? By someone going by with one of those oh, detectors. Okay. Oh, but yeah. she found it. Yep, because we stayed in the same spot. Okay. Okay. So, you know, it was found. Um, but does that happen? Does it always happen? No. no. What about if you flush it down the toilet? I mean, just goofy or it goes ways. down the sink. Goes down the sink. Some, you know what happened? My friend, her daughter was playing with her rings, and she took her diamond ring, and she was holding it while her mom was brushing her teeth, and she had it on the sink, and she took the ring, and it fell down the vent for her essential air. Wow. Is that covered? What if it's if lost? It's, if it's if you can't find it, right. It, that's mysterious disappearance. Okay, well, there's a mysterious disappearance. That's why it costs so much, folks. That's why there's a big difference between covering $1,000 under the normal policy 
53 bucks, as, as I said, and I'm, you know, again, I, I, I don't want to be that, that that's the exact amount, but 53 bucks for coverage J and 150 bucks for covering that item singled out. So there's very there's a huge distinction there. Everybody needs to know what is it that they need covered mm -hmm. and how can they cover it. So we talked about preventing it, make sure those doors are locked. We talked about how do you cover it. Um, you know, when we come back, we're going to talk about another segment as part of the homeowners. And here's the question. Do I need mine subsidence insurance? Do I need sinkhole coverage? Um, do I need water and sewer backup? And what about earth movement? So those are four things that people think, ah, it's all covered. Don't worry, it's all the same thing, it's covered. Is it really? We'll talk about it when we come back. watching Know Your Insurance. I'm your host Janine Mazurkevich and we're with Gary McNeilis today. We talked about coverage uh, just in case there's a theft in your home. Now we're going to talk about uh, some coverage that not too many insurance companies actually even give coverage for and uh, it could be confusing. You might think it's covered, you might think it's not covered, but it's always good to check your policy and if you have a question call your insurance company and see for sure if you are covered. Yeah, this is the reason why we're talking about this so much. We chose theft of jewelry before, we, and, and we chose uh, coverage like water and sewer backup. Janine, these are our, our most frequent questions. Mm -hmm. We get asked these questions every single day mm -hmm. um, by all sorts of people. And really and truly, things have changed so much in our industry and changed so much in what's available mm -hmm. to our customers that I think it's that important that we talk about it. That's because, another good yeah, point that you made. Every, every year those policies are changing, so you might think you're covered or mm -hmm. you're not covered, and then your policy changes the year. So again, always check that policy every year that you get that paperwork in. Huge assumption. You finish your basement in your home. Water comes in, seeps most of the times come backs up through your sump or backs up through a drain in your basement, mm -hmm. does huge amounts of damage. I was just at a home in Tresco. Oh, water is the devil. You, uh, it was this was a water and sewage backup. Mm -hmm. Okay, did damage like you cannot imagine. Mm -hmm. And guess what? There was no coverage. No coverage. No coverage. Oh. Uh, wasn't an Allstate insured, wasn't one of our insureds. I'm not saying that right. everybody who's got Allstate has it covered because it's not. that's not true. Mm -hmm. Old policies versus new policies versus what you choose on the policy mm -hmm. is very, very, very important. So if you have that scenario, it's going to be, and, and there's a claim, you make sure you have coverage, and we're going to talk about that. And that happens more frequently than you think. Oh, you can't imagine how many phone calls come in this office mm -hmm. asking that question and saying, why didn't you tell me? Okay, why didn't you tell me about this? Mm -hmm. Why wasn't I offered the opportunity to have this? And here's the reason, and I, and I say the reason. Policies written more than five years ago, chances of having that coverage are slim. Wow. Here and with every other company. I'm not saying that other companies didn't offer it. Some have offered it for many, many, many years. Some have not. But it's a costly item. Mm -hmm. You know, water and sewer backup is a very, very costly item. You add it on typically at, at amounts of 5,000, 10,000, 25,000. Usually you don't just add it on to say, okay, whatever your coverage A is, it'll, it'll cover it, although there are policies that do that. But if water backs up and does damage, what effect will that have on your policy? If you've got a ton of money invested in furniture, invested in drywall, invested in wiring, invested in a heating unit that could be in your basement, invested in furniture, those are things 
you may want to protect. Carpeting too. Carpeting, you know. Um, but, you know, how does it affect your policy? What happens if you make a claim? What, what are the consequences of not having the coverage? What are the consequences of making a claim? People need to know that that's out there. Mm -hmm. So we always talk about getting your policy out and reviewing it. This is something you want to look at. If it's not listed there, chances are you don't have it. So let's talk about some of those other things that go along with it, and then we'll bring it home and, and define differences. Okay. Okay. So mine subsidence, big question. First of all, what is it? Mine subsidence is just that. House is undermined. You see the, the, the ground caving in, takes your house mm -hmm. and drops it. So it has to be specifically over mine. a mine. Right, over a mine. Is it available? Well, the good news is it's available to any homeowner in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And typically they'll tell you if you have the real need for it. Right. Because they know, they don't want you to insure your house if they know it's not in an area right. prone to that. But mine subsidence insurance is a totally separate policy. Okay. Not insured by Allstate, not insured by a typical carrier in Pennsylvania, but it's offered at a very cheap price. Okay. So if you are prone, if you're in an area prone to mine subsidence, make sure you review it with your agent. Almost any agent in Pennsylvania can sell it to you. Um, we sell it. You know, anybody can consult you at a very, very low cost, okay? So that's mine subsidence insurance. How about sinkhole? Okay, typically water ran under your property, and all of a sudden, you know, your, your ground is sinking in mm -hmm. because of that. Sometimes it, it stays level forever. Mm -hmm. and I say forever for many years, and all of a sudden the hole It's just a big hole, forming. too. Yes. I've seen them. <laughs> Is it covered? A typical homeowner policy doesn't cover sinkhole. Mm -hmm. Now, just beginning of October, we've made it part of every policy offered in Pennsylvania okay. at no charge. Most companies will charge you for it. I'm not out there to say that company's bad, we're, we're better. No, we're not. What we're really wanting to make sure our, our, our people know is that they know if they have it or not. Mm -hmm. If it's needed, they know where they could get it. Make sure they talk to their agent about it. Is it something available? But everyone under Allstate does have the coverage since October free October of charge. October 1st, that was, that was a, uh, and, and I say that I want to make, make sure I'm, I'm putting out uh, a waiver out there on that one because it's policies that renew, mm -hmm. okay, and policies that are written. Okay. So if you have a policy that renewed, halfway through the year, right. that may not be covered. It's not, they don't add it on okay. until it's renewal. Okay. Okay. So that's something you want to know. Um, so, you know, those three, there's a major difference. Do you understand, does everyone understand the difference between sinkhole, water and sewer backup, mine subsidence, and then you got another piece out there, which is earth movement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Earth movement and for what reason? Could be an earthquake. Mm -hmm could be movement because you're in an area that there's a lot of homes going up and there's, right. you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, people blasting. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it moves. It your yeah, house. it moves. You know, what's covered? It's very important. If you have that, you're prone to it, that you ask the questions. You know what's covered if that should happen. What responsibility does the municipality have in situations like that? What, munis what, what responsibility does the muni municipality have for lines outside your house? Those are questions that you have to make sure you answer, you know, for your own purposes. Make sure that your coverage is proper. Um, don't, don't go without it. Um, water and sewer backup, again, I, I'm coming back to that. I think that's probably most important of all that we, we talked about here. And so common. And very, very you common. You think it can't happen to you, and then what if you have a washer that malfunctions and it's on, like, your second floor? Is that, is that that's included, or is that different item, kind of Jeannie. water? Okay. That's, not, that's, not a cover, that's not a water and sewer backup issue. That's, that's a normally water covered Water in item. general, though. You yeah. have all these water, different you know, issues your, that your happen toilet with water. Leaks. I'm sorry for interrupting, but 
your toilet leaks, that's covered, okay. you know, normally under a homeowner's policy. Okay. Um, but it's things like water and sort of backup yeah. where it comes up through, right. you know, think of it coming up mm -hmm. rather than going down. Mm -hmm. Typically, if water goes down, the damages it covered, the damages it does would be covered. Okay. So again, these are some of the uh, items that are covered under Allstate, but you need to check with your policy, know your insurance, the name of the show, right? And if you do have a question, don't assume that you do have that coverage. Ask. Always ask. Call your agent. Call me. Uh, we're always here for you. Call any member of my staff. We have very, very qualified people mm -hmm. who will answer those questions. Talk to a licensed representative and don't take the answer i think it's covered mm -hmm. please don't for your own good i don't think you don't think it's covered make sure you know it's covered make sure you can see it in writing all right gary thanks for joining us you are watching know your insurance right here on sspt tv